Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be setting up my 3 gallon Tetra Half Moon Aquarium that I bought for my new beta Campbell. Right now he is in a 1 gallon quarantine, but obviously he deserves something better, so I'm going to be setting up this tank just for him. So let's get to it. So the first thing I'm doing is just wiping down the table that I'm going to have the tank on and I do this just to make sure that there's no debris or dust or anything on the table because it's going to be on here for a while. So the next thing that I'm doing is just unboxing the tank. If you want a full unboxing on video um, with more details then I do have one on my channel already from when I unboxed Journey's tank because she is using the exact same tank that I'm setting up here. Um, however, I'm just taking everything out of the bubble wrap and laying them down on the table so they're ready to be washed and used as I'm setting up the tank. Some of them are wrapped in plastic and bubble wrap. So here's the tank itself and it is just wrapped in a layer of plastic so if you pull the plastic off your tank is ready to go and ready to be washed. So in order to wash the tank I am using this little spray hose that's on my kitchen sink and just washing it up and down the sides of the tank um, on the inside and out and along the bottom just to make sure that I cover all surfaces and make sure there's no dust or anything on the tank and it's also best to wash any fish ornaments that you buy no matter where they came from or how new they are. It's best to never assume they're clean. Once I've ran the hose all over all areas of the tank I then dump out whatever water is collected on the bottom and then we'll repeat the steps a couple of times just to make sure that everything's clean. Now, I know that not everyone will have this little hose attachment um, attached to their kitchen sink, which is perfectly okay. All you wanna do is just take a bucket and um, just get a wet cloth and rub it up and down the sides of the tank. This will prove to be just as effective. I've also heard people going outside and washing their tanks um, using their garden hose the same way that I was using this little spray hose. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Once you believe your tank is perfectly clean, just dry it off with a tea towel and then you're ready to move on to the next step. I like to lay down a dish towel just to go underneath the tank and I always put these here in case um, when I'm doing water changes any water spills or it is a tank if there's any leaking at all then it catches on here instead of soaking through to the wood of my stand. I'll put a link to this table in the description below. Next I'm just adding my substrate and this is gravel that has already been washed off camera. And because I do plan to start using live plants in the future with this tank, I am putting on the uh, substrate pretty thick here, and I've also been a fan of having a little bit more. So this is just some plain white gravel, and then I'm going to be mixing it with this beige glow-in-the-dark substrate, and both of these are um, just a regular gravel from Top Bin. But once I've added it all into the tank, I'm just mixing it up with my hand to make sure that the colors um, mix together well, and so I can't clearly tell that they're two different types of gravel. Next, I take my Marina Aquarium Thermometer and I stick it onto the side of the tank, and this has also been washed. So next, I'm going to be assembling the LED light puck that also has the built-in air stone. And this is actually quite simple, although it seems kind of complicated um, just by watching it. But all you do is take the plastic tubing that came with the tank and connect it to the small little tube uh, that's kind of sticking out on the side of the puck. And you just connect the two together and then the air stone is all ready to go. Um, and all you want to do is just bury it in the substrate um, or whatever your substrate is made of will work perfectly. And you want to make sure that you cover the flat um, platform that's around the actual LED puck itself. But you don't want to bury the actual um, lights because then you won't be able to see them through your substrate and your tank will be too dark. Now to connect the filter, all you do is take the plastic spout um, and stick it into the bottom of the filter like so. So again, this is also really easy to put together. Um, a lot of it is just kind of sticking things together. Now the filter is powered by the same air pump that the Airstone and LED light puck is, so you're going to want to connect it to tubing as well. There's a little bit of an attachment here that you just want to stick the tubing to and is... Um, it's a little difficult to get it on, you might have to do a little bit of wiggling. Um, I know I struggled with it, but I also am pretty weak, I'm not a strong person, um, so it might be easier for you. You just want to make sure that it's on there nice and tight so that any air won't leak out of it. Next is time to stick it onto your tank, and you want to make sure that you put it in a way that the air tubing is going up and over the side of the tank and not getting too tangled. And you also want to make sure that you attach the filter in a spot that it will fit through the whole um, the little cutout that's on the lid of the tank um, to make sure that it uh, passes through and the lid can fit. Next you want to get the air pump ready so that you can power all of this stuff and all you want to do is take the little connector piece that comes with it and connect the single end to the air pump and then you want to leave the side with the two little connectors open and uh, leave that free. 
Now all you have to do to connect the filter and the air stone to the pump is to take the other end of the tube and stick them on each of the little knobs that is coming out of the uh, piece that we just connected to the air pump. Now they each have a little knob on them and these ones you can use to control the flow. It will let either more bubbles out of the air stone, then it will either um, lessen or weaken the flow for the filter. So the next thing I'm doing is adding my little aquarium animated chest ornament that I recently purchased. And this is the one that's also connected with an air pump. And I already have an air pump connected to Draco's tank, which is the fish that's in the tank that's uh, to the left of the screen right now. And I'm just using his air pump. Next, I'm adding in his skull ornament and also the sinking beta log that he loves. And if I didn't have it in his tank, he would be very sad. Then I'm also taking these Zoomed beta ornaments, another kinds that suction cup onto the back of the tank, and I'm just going to be sticking them uh, onto the back of this tall tank. And I did get them for this tank because the back is so high, and I want to make sure the ornaments went up a little bit more because it's uh, a taller tank. So now I'm just adding in this really tall National Geographic silk plant, and I have to admit this isn't one of my favorite plants, but I didn't want to go out and buy a whole bunch of new silk plants for him because I did plan to use live plants with him in the future, so I decided to use this leftover one, even though it wasn't my favorite, and it's natural, so it went with the theme of the tank at the time anyway. So that's why I used it. Now the last step, and probably the most important step, is adding the water. And this is a 3 gallon tank, so I added about 3 gallons of water. And I had already treated this water with water conditioner off camera. And I used the top fin water conditioner, and it is one to help neutralize ammonia. Because this is a new tank, it's important to have that uh, ammonia neutralization in it, because the ammonia is going to be quite high because your tank has not yet cycled. And if any point throughout this video you had noticed that I had not had a heater, do not worry, I do have a heater ready, um, and that is why the thermometer is in there ready to go. Um, it's just that his heater is with him in his quarantine tank right now, so when I move him into this tank, I will also move the heater into this tank, and that will also have a little bit of the bacteria that is on uh, it right now from being in his one gallon. So that's another way to kind of kickstart the cycle, but also um, I didn't want to have him in his quarantine without a heater, so I'm just going to move it over um, when I move him into this tank. So this is a finished look at his tank, all set up and with all of the water and all the lights turned on. And leave your comments down below on what you like about this tank, what you dislike about this tank, and your favorite piece that is inside this tank right now. I hope that if you have this tank and you were wanting to set it up, this video kind of gave you an idea on how to do so, or at least showed you um, what is in the process if you were looking into getting this tank in the future. So if you do not own this tank and have no plans on getting it in the future, but you just want to watch me set up my newest tank, then I hope I made this video at least somewhat entertaining. But whatever your reason for watching this video, thank you for watching, and make sure you subscribe if you like what you see, and I'll see you next time. Bye! And make sure you keep the bubble wrap to pop later, because that is, um, no matter how old you are, that's still fun.